Oh, Vice Chair, Sister Lisa, and the uh, to all the comrades here uh, in St. Louis and uh, those who are online, uh, give an appreciation for the Black and Black Coalition 8th Annual Electoral Candidate School, which uh, I've uh, attended all eight and happy to do so. Uh, give an appreciation to our leadership under uh, the African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Armali Yoshitella. Um, our presentation today is, deals with the power of the Black vote. Of the Black is Back Coalition since its inception. Brother Cam Howard, welcome. Uhuru, Uhuru. my camera was off, sorry. Uhuru, Brother Cam Howard. Uhuru, Vice Chair, Sister Lisa, and Uhuru to all the comrades here uh, in St. Louis and uh, those who are online. Uh, give an appreciation for the Black is Back Coalition 8th Annual Electoral Candidate School, which uh, I've uh, attended all eight and happy to do so. Uh, give an appreciation to our leadership under uh, the African People's Socialist Party and Chairman Armali Yoshitella. Um, our presentation today is, deals with the power of the Black vote. And open it up. Part of what I'm, the presentation that I'm using to deliver this power that we have to for us to understand that we do have power at this particular time is a presentation I use in the national campaign called Earn the Black Vote, uh, which is a campaign designed to leverage this power for the Reparations Commission. So um, here I'm saying that uh, this presentation is titled Securing Federal Redress and Other Demands, Reparations Commission by Executive Order before the November election, as well as other demands. And we've talked about some of those other demands uh, here. Hold on, brother. That's, a, that's not the right. That's one. Yep. That's that. All right. So you go to the next slide. All right. So um, in securing and utilizing this power uh, and securing uh, the ability to make our demands, uh, I want to sp uh, share what I call uh, the stars are being uh, that are in alignment right now for this action. Uh, also, how we align the president uh, with the, the power that we have and how we align the masses to the power that we possess. What do I mean when I say the stars in alignment? This is a statement that's used to say that a situation is very good or lucky or becomes completely right in order for something to happen. It expresses that events or circumstances have fallen into place often unexpectedly. There are three key aspects to this statement when, when it's used. One, a series of events or conditions come together favorably, an implication of fate or destiny playing a role, and it's often used to describe coincidences or fortunate outcomes. And that's what we see right now uh, in the political structure and the political setting uh, in America, in which we have a tremendous role to play and uh, a tremendous amount of power to exercise. The stars are totally in alignment. And what are those stars? One, we're in the presidential election cycle. Two, uh, we created unintentionally uh, Black voting power. We've established political will in this country for reparations and for Black voters are fed up. And with these four configurations, uh, present a favorable position for us to make the type of demands that we need, that we want. Go to the next slide. So we're in election year. Most people think this is just about who governs America. What's the go who's gonna, you know, what party actually 
you know, makes the laws or, or actually signs the laws into, uh, into, uh, uh, laws. actually signed the laws is, that are uh, presented by Congress. But this is about control of all the state apparatuses. You know, there are dozens of cabinets, positions, and foreign positions that uh, the winning party gets to uh, put leadership in. Uh, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Defense, Department of, of Education, Housing, all these different departments. And that's a tremendous amount of power. We're talking about trillions of dollars that are being managed and ruled by a particular party when that party actually wins the election. It's about global power and global dominance and global resources. That's what this election is all about. It's not just about what occurs here in America, it's about what occurs on the planet. And we're saying that Black people play a huge role in what white American, U.S. American, uh, fills that role uh, in, in this quest for global domination, power, and resources. And this is about a continuation of white supremacy and imperialism. That's what this election is about. And so when we look at, understand that this election is more than about who governs, who governs uh, America, but the state of the non-Black world uh, also, then there's some strategic questions we must ask. ask. For instance, which candidate do we think can best that that we think we can best disrupt these plans that they're in office? Is it the Democratic Party president or is it the Republican Party president? Which one do we think we have a better opportunity to disrupt the plans that they have for the domination of the planet and the, and the theft of resources and, uh, uh, on, on, on the planet? I don't think many of us even take that into consideration. When we talk, when we deal with who's running for president, who we're going to vote for, then we have then we have to uh, one another question is, do we then work to get that candidate elected, or do we let things just play out? And we determine that we have a better opportunity with one candidate than the other to disrupt their goals and plans to continue to dominate this 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 planet in the way that they do. Do we ensure that that part that one wins and the other one does not win? If we made that determination. And then if we made that determination, do we even have the power to make that happen? After we made a determination that this candidate best, we, our, we can align our forces best to disrupt the plans with this candidate, then we have to ask ourselves, do we have the power to make sure that that particular candidate gets in office? And I'm saying that we do at this time because the stars are in alignment. Next slide. <laughs> the second start is an alignment is that the black vote is key to a democratic party victory to, de to victory in america period over the last 70 years the republicans have won the majority of the white vote in every presidential election the majority of the white vote if this was a contest in this country just between white voters since 1952, there would have been all Republican uh, presidents. There would not have been a single Democratic Party president since 1952 That's right. if it was only among white voters. So the difference has been, and LBJ was the exception, but you know that he wouldn't have been president if Kennedy wasn't assassinated. And we put Kennedy in office. Kennedy won 49% of the uh, white vote in 1960. Nixon was his running mate, run, his opponent. Nixon won 51%. If it was only among white voters, there wouldn't have been a Kennedy. Right, right. It was the black vote that was 8% of the electorate in this nation that put Kennedy in office. We put Carter in office. Carter won less of a white vote than Kennedy. It was a black vote to put Carter in office. It was a black vote yeah. to put Clinton in office. It was a black vote to put him in office a second time. The black vote to put Obama in office two times. And it was certainly the black vote that put Biden in office. Over the last since 1960, there has been 16 administrations, presidential administrations. Eight were Republican and eight were Democrat. And all eight of those Democrats were put there because of the Black voter. Next slide. I'll make sure we're safe. So um, Kennedy won 80% of the black, black vote. That made a difference. 
so after Carter was elected, Carter moved in front of the, well, LBJ and Kennedy, in exchange for our, for the vote, for our black vote, they began to systematically dismantle uh, apartheid. But it wasn't them. It was, as we stated here, it was our struggle that moved them to dismantle apartheid. But it was a struggle that did that. But because we had the power to put them in office, they had to act based on putting them in office and based on what we were doing in the streets in America, as, as the chairman talked about uh, throughout, this, throughout this electoral candidate school. Carter won 48% of the white vote. And again, it was a black vote that put Carter in office. And he moved in exchange for us putting them in there. He moved to further affirmative action that began in the Kennedy administration. And, but that was based on what, again, what we were doing in the streets and the fact that we put him in office, that the black vote put him in office. And then there was 12 years of Republicans before we put we were able to put another black, another uh, Democrat in office. And Clinton gave us um, symbolism, you know, gave us some neo-colonial leaders that he put into power. And then Obama gave us benign neglect. And we've got nothing from the power that we, we possess since that particular time. In the last election, the Republicans know who keeps them out of office. That's why they work so hard and spend so much money to suppress the black vote, because they know it was been, it's been the black vote that had kept them out of office for the last, you know, for those eight presidential administrations that they would have gone if it wasn't been for the black vote. In, the, in 2020, they spent $900 million to suppress the black vote, and they crafted 900 pieces of legislation, according to Mark Moriarty, Urban League, to suppress the vote in the last election. There was a report that came out and says that about 17 million voters have been purged from the voters' roll yes. that won't vote in 2024 because of the, of the oppressive legislation of the Republicans. They know who keeps them out of office. 100%. We do not know that we have that power. Right. And we cannot make the demands that we're talking about making until the masses know that we possess the power to make the demands. Next slide. Blacks in this country are 20% of the Democratic Party's base. White voters, white Democratic voters are 61% of the Democratic Party base. Black voters are 20%, and all other people of color combined are 19%. So we're more than all other people of color combined in the Democratic Party, and yet we're not getting the type of responses to our needs as this power suggests we should be. And this, this is just some quotes from some mainstream newspapers, American newspapers, Vox, New York Times, Washington Post, et cetera, all saying that the, we have this particular power at this particular time. Now, many of us won't listen unless white folks say it. We don't believe it unless white folks say it. So y'all ain't gonna believe those Cam saying it. <laughs> but, but I'm showing you white folks are saying it. White folks are telling you the amount of power that we possess right now in this country. So I'll take that to the bank. So here's just some numbers. Uh, next slide. Here's just some numbers. Uh, just to show uh, <laughs> over the over the last uh, since 1976 these numbers to 1976 to 2000 how the whites um, the Republicans have won the majority of the white vote in every election. Go go down to I want to go to uh, point out Carter's first Carter's first run. He got 48 percent of, of the white vote. And Reagan won 56% of the white vote in uh, 1980. And the measure is, has been around 40, 42% of, of the white vote that the Democrats need to win in order for uh, them to be uh, competitive against the Republicans. If they can keep it around 40, 42%, 43%, they can, the black vote is enough to take them over. Next slide. We see that Obama 
In the second election, he only got 39% of the white vote. Mm -hmm. And it was the 93% of the black vote that ensured him a victory, even though he got less than 40% of the white vote. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton, abysmal. She only got 37% of the white vote compared to Trump, 61%. And it, even with our strength, it was not enough to, to uh, take her over the top. Next slide. Now this is about Trump and uh, Biden and Trump in 2020, Biden's win. He got 90% of the black vote. We were 12% of the black electorate, 12% uh, of the electorate in this country. I, I, want, I want us to look at Latino. Latinos are 10% of the electorate in this country. 63% voted for Biden, 57% voted for Trump. Their votes cancel each other out. They have absolutely no, make no difference in the election because their vote cancels each other out. The same way with others. Asians vote probably two to one. So every one vote they give to the Republicans, or every two votes they give to the Democrats, they give one vote to the Republicans. That's just a one, net one vote. But when you look at Blacks, we give nine out of every 10 votes to the Democratic Party. So that's eight net positive votes for the Democratic Party coming from the Black community. And again, the Asians just wipe each other out, just cancel each other out. They make absolutely no difference. So if we're making all this difference to the Democratic Party. Why aren't we getting that's right? Why aren't we getting what is required, what we require, what's in our interest, political interest? That's because our leadership, this yeah. so-called leadership, yeah. this colonial, neo-colonial yeah. leadership. Yeah. Dr. Amos Wilson says, yeah. how do you have more doctors, black doctors than ever before, and yet we're the sickest yeah. at this time yeah. than we've ever been? Yeah. How do you have more lawyers than ever before, and yet most, we're more in jail than we've ever been? <laughs> how do you have more politicians than we ever had, and we got less power than we ever had? <laughs> Neo-colonialism, yes. right? Yeah. Neo-colonialism, a Eurocentric mindset. We have to have an African-centered mindset. We have to have revolutionaries yeah. in these particular offices. Yeah, yeah. Speaking to you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> we need you, brother. So the stars in alignment. When it comes to reparations, we have demonstrated to this country yeah. that there's political will for reparations. Yeah. Yes. In the last Congress, 88% of all Democrats elected in the House and the Senate, 88% favored the, the two reparations legislations. 88% of the federal legislators that were voted in that were voted in as Democrat. The three cities, the three states with the largest cities in this country, all those states have reparations commission. You look at New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. You got a reparations commission in New York State, reparations commission in California State, and reparations commission in Illinois, mm -hmm. the three largest cities in this country. Mm -hmm. You got hundreds of cities and other states buying for reparations right now, all being pushed by Democratic elected officials. Mm -hmm. So we see at the federal, state, and local level, reparations is something this, that, that Democrats say they're in favor of. We have a 2019 Huffington Post poll that says 80% of Democrats poll either favor a reparations commission or unopposed to reparations commission. So the Democratic voters even say they, they're in support of a reparations commission. The only Democrat that is not in alignment with his party is the president. Right? If Congress say we want a reparations commission, state executives say they want a reparations commission, now putting it in place. Local Democrats are putting reparations commission in place. The voter says we're not opposed to it and we favor it. Then why hasn't the president moved? He's the only one that's not in alignment with the with his own party. Why? Four minutes. Four minutes. Okay. So Biden is not aligned on this issue. The fourth star that's lined up right now is that black voters are fed up, <laughs> saying, "Man, we ain't taking this. No, we ain't just voting Democrat." There's 2.9 million black voters who voted for Biden in the last election said we, we disapprove of him right now. He can't win with 13 million black votes. It took with 12 million. It took 15 plus million for him to win. He cannot win. He loses tomorrow if the vote was there. And I think uh, uh, Brother Massimella shared that yesterday. He loses tomorrow. 
we have already made the threat. It's not like it's a threat down the line. We've already, it's already done. It's, it's a conclusion that he cannot win unless he does something big. And, but we have to, uh, we have to, uh, to push that over. So black voters are set, fed up. They're saying, we, you can't take our vote for granted. We want something now before the election and our vote must be earned. And that's why we entitled this, our campaign, Earn the Black Vote. Mm -hmm. We put together a national campaign. Now that the stars are aligned, we must align the masses with the stars and we must seize the time. Seize the time. Yes, sir. These are our demands, the reparations commission for the election, free the horror of three, mm -hmm. free all political prisoners, right end police terror, right end the genocide in Palestine. Right These are our demands before right the election, right? right? We have the power. If we have the power to do it. I've demonstrated we have the power to do it. Right on. Right? But we have to get the masses to align with us. The masses don't know. If you don't know you have power, you can't use power. Right. You can throw your power away. They talking about I'm gonna vote for Trump. Well, I'm not voting, I'm voting third party. Why are you gonna throw your, your power away right now? You have to say at the minimum, I'm uncommitted. Right. I'm uncommitted. Yeah. I'm uncommitted. Yeah. And so that makes them say, well, damn, how do we get you committed? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, well, right. you want to get us committed? Right. Reparations Commission before the election. Right. Free the whole three right. before the election. Right. End the genocide in Palestine before, if you want us committed. Right. And I'm not going to say, I might be voting third party, but I'm not going to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> right? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you the opportunity to win me over. <laughs> And that's for the power we have to possess. That's right. Right on. And I want to be clear that we understand we're not going to have this power for long. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. It ain't the, they're going to fast track these migrants to vote. Yeah. In the yeah. <laughs> and these migrants are going to start voting Democrats because Democrats are, are giving them all these resources. Right. And these Republicans are not nowhere near finished in suppressing the black vote. Yeah. And all the other things they're doing. Once whoever's elected is in office they can do whatever they want to do or not do the power is before the election it's pushing this demand before the election that's why our power lays because they know both parties know that the black vote is key republicans say all we need is 20 percent either to not vote democrat or to vote republican and they don't care how that 20% comes. 5% more vote Republican and 15% don't vote at all or vote third party. They don't care how it goes. They know that still the black vote is key to their victory. And the Democrats know they need 90, 90% of the black vote. And so we hold the key and we have held the key to what party rules white supremacy on this planet. And that's really what it's about. <laughs> and what can we get until we yeah. utilize this process, until we can tear this shit down? Right. What can we get in favor of building? We're looking at reforms to, to, to bring some, some better conditions to our people in the process of our liberation struggle. Right. And these are some of the ads we've been targeting to the president um, to, move, to get him in alignment with our understanding that they're totally dependent on the black vote. We sent almost a million of these ads to 2,300 of his top influencers with this AI-driven company that we're using. And I think that's my time. Uh, but these are just some of the ads. We, we were targeting, we had a 30-day campaign targeting the president about our power. These are some of the ads. It's your duty to inform the president. We're talking to the president's influencers. The Black electors demand for reparations commission is not a request. It's a prerequisite to victory. Ignore it, and the Democratic Party faces defeat. And so these were targeted to a 2,300 of his top influencers, 500 to his personal, 850 to his political influencers, and 750 to his uh, professional influencers. We also message this around the democratic, the political will that exists. So they know that the party is already in alignment with reparations. The elected are, is already in the line. The voters are already in the line. S40 is the first time since Reconstruction has there been a reparations commission, I mean, a reparations bill in both houses of Congress. First time since Reconstruction. So we're showing that there's political will in this country among Democrats, so-called Democrats, for reparations at this time. 
And then our final set of messages, we ran these messages for 10 days. First 10 days, we ran the power of the Black vote. The next 10 days, we ran the political will exist. And then the third 10 days, we ran that this is Biden Lincoln's moment, that he asked that Lincoln was forced to um, put guns in the hands of Black folks. <laughs> Because he didn't want to put no guns in the hands of black folks to kill white folks in the Civil War. He was forced to do it. Lerone Bennett said he was forced into glory. This is Biden's Emancipation Proclamation moment. He wants to save democracy like Lincoln wanted to save the Union. He's going to have to do some things that he may not support personally. And so we're, if you want to save democracy, then this is what you must do. So I thank you for this opportunity.